Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing fine. Um, things are a bit rough where I am. There's more COVID lockdown business and all that, but hopefully it will sort itself out pretty soon. Uh, the good news is, is that I have five more short stories for you today. Five more stories you should read. And every story on this list is genuinely of good quality. I think you'll like every one. So let's get started. Story number one is called To Be or Not To Be and it's a story by the great Kurt Vonnegut published in 1962. This story is set in the future. It's a kind of utopian future where war has been eliminated and everything's clean and functional and peaceful and the disease of ageing has been cured so nobody dies unless they get involved in an accident and uh, but there's a catch in order to control the world's population every time somebody has a baby they have to find a willing participant or a willing donor who's who agrees to die in order for that baby to live Every time somebody's born, somebody else has to die, and the parents have to find a willing donor for that. And uh, to be or not to be is actually a phone number for a termination agency. If, if you choose that you don't want to live anymore, you can just phone this agency and they, um, they kill you in some way. I don't think that's specified. And during this story, there's a man who has triplets. His wife is pregnant with triplets, and so he's got a problem. He then has to find three donors who, are, who will agree to die. He's, he already finds his grandfather. His grandfather offers to die, but then that still leaves two, two more. And um, that's the basic premise of this one, but it's a great story. It's very clever and it's written very well and it kind of makes you think it kind of makes you question whether dying is a good thing or whether it's whether it's ethical to kind of have a one in one out system when you first read the story your your first impressions is that you know it's wrong the system is wrong you can't you can't make people die every time somebody's born but then by the end of the story, it kind of goes the other way. It's, it's kind of got mixed messages. It, it's a good story because it's thought-provoking. And uh, I highly recommend this one to you. To be or not to be. Number two on this list is a story from all the way back in 1902 called The Monkey's Paw. This was written by W.W. W. Jacobs. And this one is... It's set in a family home. There's a husband, a wife, and a young son. Not too young, is it? Well, he's about 20 odd. He's like a young adult. And they get a visit from a friend who's, who's served in the army. I think it's the British Army. And he's just got back from an operational tour in India. And he's got this monkey's paw on him. It's like a, it's like a, a monkey's paw that's been cut off at the wrist like a souvenir and he explains that you can you can kind of make wishes and it and the poor makes them come true but he warns the family that it's bad news and they should stay away and he actually throws the poor on the on the fire but then the dad rushes to it and grabs it out of the fire and kind of ignores the warnings and he starts making wishes and the first wish that he makes is is that he wants two hundred pounds in cash, and then the, then the poor kind of clenches up and one of the fingers goes down or something, and then the next day, well, I won't tell you any more than that. It will kind. Of, I don't want to ruin this story. I don't want to put too many spoilers in here because I want you to uh, genuinely enjoy these tales. But he, the wish comes true and he gets to £200, but there's a catch. There's a huge catch. And this is a good story because, you know, the moral of the story is be careful what you wish for. Or it could also be if you make a wish, 
Make sure that you specify very carefully all of the terms and conditions. It's a good story, I recommend you read this one as well. Number three on this list is another story from J.G. Ballard. Um, on my other two videos I've, I've put Ballard stories on because I'm a big fan of Ballard. Um, this one's called The Greatest Television Show on Earth and he published this in 1970. This is an interesting one indeed. It's quite clever, I think. It's explained in the story that in the year 2001, time travel gets invented. It doesn't go into the details of that, it, you, just, you just got to believe it. Time travel is a real thing. <clears throat> and in this future society, there, there's no news. Everything's all peaceful again. It's, it's like a utopia in a way. And so you've got these TV channels that need to, to make interesting content. And so they get the idea to travel back in time and start filming historical events live as they happen and broadcast them live to the world, right? So they, they travel back to World War II and they broadcast it as it's happening. World War I, uh, the assassination of JFK, for example, and they do all these, these live streams of, of historical events. And it all goes fine. But then they decide to do the Battle of Waterloo with Napoleon. And so they travel back to the actual event. But when they get there, they're, they're disappointed because when they actually see it for real, they discover that it's nowhere near as dramatic as, as the history books uh, portray it to be. Uh, when historians talk about the Battle of Waterloo, they talk about this great massive battle and all the guns and everything. But they, when they travel back, they see it's actually quite tame in, compared to the stories. And that's not good enough. So one of the producers has an idea that he suggests that they should actually step in and start tampering with the historical events. And they should start kind of... Um, they should add to the action and they, sh they should start getting involved with the choreography of the, of the history. So they, they start doing that and they start, they start taking ammunition in the time machine and dishing out more ammo and more guns and they, they take money back with them and they recruit farmers from the surrounding areas so that there are more soldiers and they kind of juice up the war to make it better for TV, right? <laughs> It's a, it's a great idea for a short story. I really love this. And um, this producer who, ha who has the idea, that the, great, the best one-liner in this story is that after he has the idea of tampering with history, he says, after all, history is just a first draft screenplay, all ready to edit. So they start editing history in that way. And it goes well at first, and they have loads and loads of ratings, but of course, like most human beings, they go too far, and everything gets ruined. Story number four on this list is called Serial. This is a newer story, published in 2012, and it's a collaboration between two authors. One is called Jack Kilbourne, and the other one is called Blake Crouch. This, I wouldn't describe this as a clever story like some of the others on the list. I mainly put it on here because of the entertainment value. It was, it was very fun to read. I've read it twice now and I liked it both times. It's straight up horror. If you love horror, you'll love this. It's about what happens when two serial killers meet. The first half of the story follows a male serial killer as he picks up a hitchhiker and he kills this hitchhiker in the most horrific way and you get quite vivid descriptions and then you follow a female serial killer who is actually a hitchhiker herself she gets into other people's cars and then and then kills the people who pick her up and then later in the story the male serial killer sees this woman hitchhiking so he, he gives her a lift and then the fireworks happen. 
and you see what happens when two serial killers meet. It's it's a great story. Um, if if you love if you love like grisly horror, if you like uh, like old school hitchhiking serial killer type scenarios, you'll love it. it it's set in America as well, and um, I highly recommend it. That's number four. Number five is a story from way back in 1935, I believe, and it's called The Town of Cats, and it's written by a poet called Hagiwara Sakutara. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Japanese man, a poet, apparently. This is an interesting one because it, it covers a certain a certain phenomenon that I've experienced. It, the protagonist starts off by ex describing this, this thing that he experiences now and again. He gets lost in areas that he knows well. And now and again he, get, he walks down an alleyway and he emerges on a street but at the opposite end of what he usually walks, walks down it by. And he sees streets from a different angle and for, for, for a while he thinks he's completely lost and he hasn't, he's never been there before. But then all of a sudden everything clicks and he realises that he's on a street that he, he walks down every day. Right? That's explained at the beginning. And the main bulk of the story is where he, he's walking on these, on these Japanese mountains somewhere. And he walks down a pathway and he enters this small village in the mountains and, it, and he's, he's approached this village from a different angle than what he usually approaches it from and of course he gets this weird feeling again that he's lost and it, or, everything looks really weird and he looks around at all the shopkeepers and the people walking by and he gets this really tense feeling that everything's about to crumb, like fall in on itself and there's, there's, the, the air is really tense and then he, sees, he looks around and he sees all these cats everywhere it, it's, it's a really surreal story and, it, and it's quite hard to explain as well I think it's one of these stories that you have to read to fully understand but the reason I love it is because it, it describes this, this thing and I've, I've had this myself I've had a kind of dizzy moment before where I, I've been in an area or a town that I know quite well but because I've approached it from a different angle or something for a few minutes I've been lost and then all of a sudden whack I just look around I think oh I'm here I know this place and, and it, it, got, it like the message of the story is like there might be another dimension behind the reality that you see it, it's very surreal and it's very, um, very thought-provoking, and it's 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 magical without being magical, if that makes sense. I, I highly recommend this. Now, I've actually put links to some of these stories up on my blog at jamesflynn.org, so you, you can read some of these stories for free. Um, head over to jamesflynn.org, look at my latest blog post, and you'll be able to read some of these stories for free. I hope you've uh, enjoyed hearing about these stories and I, I really hope you enjoy reading them even more because I've had a lot of pleasure reading these ones. They're well worth reading, okay? Um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, I just want to qu quickly remind you that you can pre-order my book, The Hand That Pulls You Under. You can pre-order it on Amazon and Smashwords. I've included the links to this below on this video. And uh, thanks, thanks again. Look out for my next video in about two weeks or so. And in the meantime, try to have a great day on this unpredictable, outrageous, stupefying, astonishing rock we call Earth. Goodbye.